Episode of Back to Bull Kicks. I wanted to give you guys a quick update as to what's going on. I'm seeing that this series is kind of catching on, and I'm glad that it is. I hope you enjoyed some of the tentative maxes um, that I was that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, you know, ever since I got out of my shell, the main thing I've been focusing on is working a lot of my mo my mobility and my form on a lot of my lifts, uh, especially with the big three: the bench, the deadlift, and the squat. Um, I found. Due to the injury last year, working in my prep, I was making some extra compensations. I had some hip mobility issues and knee mobility issues, uh, things like that, that I've been working on to improve my overall power form, uh, you know, just the lift in general to avoid injury. Um, sometimes injury, though it sucks, can also be one of the best things that ever happened to you because uh, it'll show you where you're making your mistakes. So I haven't really explained what my planning has been based off of. And the things that I'm currently doing is, yes, I'm still using... Uh, a daily undulated periodization type style. However, I'm not working on the 1% uh, rep max range. I'm using a lot of the RPE scale. Now, I know Johnny Candido did a, reason, uh, a recent video on why he uses the 1% uh, ranges um, and how it helps him mentally set up for his lifts. Now, I'm, I've done both. Um, with my old daily undulated periodization program, I used to do a lot of uh, my you know, 1% rep max percentages, and I used to scale my workload or my, my training around those numbers in terms of what I was using in my hypertrophy range, what I was using in my power range, and my strength ranges. But the one thing I was actually talking about yesterday with my coach was how I kind of enjoy the RPE scale more right now as of this point. And what do I mean by that? Um, I've always told you be patient, be careful of your ego in the gym, um, and things like that. And what I was finding with the 1% rep ranges, especially since I commuted to Manhattan every day, is I was getting so focused on the number that come hell or high water, I was going after that number, which meant was if I, if I was too tired or if I just felt some stiffness or some mobility issues, I was still going after the weight. And if you go back to my, some of my older videos, I remember seeing times where I'd be squatting and I'd be like shifting off to the right and stuff. And instead of listening to my body, um, I was pushing the envelope a little too much, and I think that's what ended up leading to my injury overall. Now, is that my coach's fault or the planning's fault? Absolutely not. It was entirely, entirely on me to know that I didn't have it that day, and I probably should have scaled back by about 10 or 20 pounds in some of those lifts so I can get some of the work in but avoid the injury and avoid some of the overcompensating I was doing due to some of the issues that I had going on. So... Since my show, I've been working a lot off of the RPE scale. Now, why have I done that? Um, granted, every time I'm going in the gym, I'm looking to progress, whether that's by 2 pounds, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, whatever it is, I always want to get stronger in my lifts. But what it has allowed me to do is on a day where I'm really just not feeling it, it's nothing's going right, it's allow myself to back off and just work at a lighter workload without being concerned about hitting a particular number. And for me, at this particular point, just because I'm trying to heal and recover from my, my uh, bodybuilding season, I, I don't know you, how much you guys know, but it does take a lot out of you physically. And I do have a physical coming up in February to go get my, you know, I want to go get my testosterone levels checked and just see how everything else is going in terms of my blood work. The RPE scale has allowed me to stay healthy, work on my mobility, 
um, work a lot on my mind muscle connection, all things that I wasn't allowing myself to do with the 1%, uh, you know, the, the percentages of my one rep max. So I've been doing a lot of RPE training. Um, that's been my main, main focus. All right. So I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just using the RPE scale a lot more right now because I think it's a lot more beneficial. However, if I do eventually decide that I'm going to compete in a powerlifting meet, which I don't see one on the, on the horizon anywhere in the near future, it's just not something that's on my agenda right now as I have other things going on in my life. Just like a bodybuilding competition is not on the horizon anytime, near, uh, anytime soon. Um, I'm going to continue using the RPE scale, but if I did decide to do a powerlifting meet, I, I think I would work more on the percentages of the one rep max, um, trying to hit it and trying to set new PRs and increase my work capacity. And I would use the one, the percentage of the one rep max to do that. All right. So now that that's all out of the way, um, where's my weight at? What am I doing with my food? As everybody's kind of, you know, is always asking me. Um, as of last week, I was bouncing around 182 to 182 and a half pounds. I'm now back down to 181.5 pounds. We've done nothing with my food. I'm still sitting at 285 grams of carbs. Uh, on a training day, I drop it to around 200 to 220 on the off day, and I still have my high carb refeed of 435 grams. And yesterday, I got to enjoy a nice plate of chocolate chip pancakes, which I have not had in a long time. It felt really good just to have, not a cheat meal, but just... Uh, just have something that I, you know, really enjoyed that I was using in my off season um, previously on my high carb days. So I went out and enjoyed that. Um, work schedule's been nuts, but thankfully things have calmed down. I think we've gotten past the uh, the busy point. I'm going to cruise for the rest of the year. Um, I'm taking a bunch of vacation days, so look forward to a lot more workout footage coming between now and the end of the year. Um, Honestly, the only thing that's still going on is my right shoulder is still a little finicky on day to day. My knees have stayed relatively healthy. I feel like my hip mobility and my depth on squats has gotten better. Um, I'm starting to get more into the groove on my deadlifts as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them below. and I'll talk to you guys soon.